At home, you know exactly what you eat and what you don't. Kashrut is simple. If the owner is Jewish, it will be probably kosher. Vashgaha might be OU or something a bit stricter like Chofke or Starke. In Israel, almost everything belongs to Jews, but Kashrut is a bit more complex. There are some areas that with no strict kashrut, a restaurant just can't exist, like Jerusalem or Bnei Barak. In others, a basic kashrut will do just fine, like Ranana. And in some, unfortunately, many restaurants are totally non-kosher, like Tel Aviv or Elat. That said, even in Tel Aviv or Elat, and practically anywhere in Israel, you'll be able to find something that's kosher. But as there are many levels of observance, there are many levels of kashrut in Israel and I will try explaining them as best as possible in this video. Let's start with you simply asking a restaurant, are you kosher? If the answer is all our products are kosher, that means that the place itself is not kosher. To call a place kosher in Israel, it needs, by law, a tudat kashrut, a dated valid certificate from the local rabbanut, indicating it's kosher. So when you ask, are you kosher, you want to hear, yes, we have a tuda. Here, take a look. Then there is a place that have pictures of great rabbis hanging on the wall. This doesn't mean it's kosher or not. I like to say that if the picture was of a guy that runs the place and that the rabbi was cooking, I'll eat. But as that's not the case, please show me a valid tuda. Now let's go over the different types of kashrut you can find in Israel. The most basic is given by the local rabbinical council, which exists in every city. Those look like this, and have to be displayed, just make sure that it's valid. The meaning of this level of kashrut really depends on where you are. In cities like Tzfat, Jerusalem or Bnei Brak, this basic hashgaha is quite good. In other places, the situation isn't that clear. The main reason for this is that at this level they don't need to have a mashgiach there all the time. He pops by a couple of times a week, and when the chef isn't an observant Jew, and many times is not Jewish at all, you can imagine what happens when the mashgiach is not here. The next level is mehadrim. It's also given by the local rabbinical council. This is given when all the food products have a higher kashrut, and the mashgiach is almost always in the kitchen. In the next levels, things get a bit more complicated. But that's it. The higher types of kashrut come in many shapes and flavors. There are the Beit Yosef or Mahpud, which are Sephardi. And there is Rubin, Landau, Hatam Sofer and Shirit Israel, which are Ashkenazi. Each claim to be the best, and I agree with all of them. As a tour guide that respects Talmidei Chachamim, I don't want to put my head in between mountains. If you stick on eating only badats, ask your rabbi before you come what he recommends. What I can recommend is don't forget to inform your tour guide your exact kashrut needs. That makes planning much easier. With all that said, the rule of a farm is that if there is a tilda, then the place is kosher. I recommend that if you are not sure that the owner or the chef are observant Jews, ask to speak to the meshgiach. Usually, if he is not there, you will find his number on the tilda. Feel free to call him. You can ask him, when are you here? If he is not on the premises, the good answer should be, just left, coming back soon. Who put the food on the stove? The good answer is only Jews. What type of leafy vegetables are you using? Only hasalat is a good bug-free answer. How do you check the rice? If a meshgiach says that first he sifts and then checks on the light table, that is an excellent work and you can enjoy eating in a place like this. I hope you got useful information here. And if you want to know what are the most recommended Israeli street foods, check out my video guide to the kosher Israeli street food. Shalom from Israel. I am Eli Riskin of Jewish Israel Tools.